All right, now let's take a look how we actually solve this uh, rolling uh, problem. We have uh, this little solid ball and uh, set on the ramp. There's a static friction between the ball and the ramp. We know that if there's no static friction, if this is super slippery, then this ball is going to just uh, uh, slide down like a, a piece of block. The rolling motion has to connect the translational motion with a rotational motion as the ball is uh, rotating down the hill. Uh, so this is a weird uh, problem why it's kind of uh, hard sometimes. All right, let's uh, take a look how we solve it. Uh, the question is to find out what is the linear acceleration uh, going down the ramp. First, let's do a free body diagram uh, as any uh, mechanics question. Free body diagram is very important. So I make it a little exploded so that we can see more clearly where the forces are. So uh, the first thing we want to do is also to set up a coordinate system where I line up my x with the ramp, which is the direction of the acceleration. I line the y is in the normal direction of the ramp. So this would be my x and this would be my y. Now let's uh, put down all the physical real forces. First, we put down the gravitational force. Now we have to be very careful uh, where the force is going to be applied. Now the normal force, the normal force is going to be applied at the contact point where the uh, ball contacts the surface and it's going to go through uh, the center of mass. And the frictional force is go also going to be applied uh, at the contacting point. With this a uh, coordinate system set up, we can actually start to separate the uh, variables. Let me use the dash line to represent the variables of this gravitational force. So the vertical component is right here. Horizontal component is right here. Okay, let's uh, label all these uh, forces. So this is my mg, and uh, this is uh, the theta would be 30 degrees. I have this uh, vertical component, which is adjacent to the theta, uh, being equal to uh, mg cosine theta. And uh, I have this uh, horizontal component, uh, which is the opposite side of the theta. It's like uh, uh, this opposite of this angle. So it's uh, uh, sine theta. Now we have this uh, uh, frictional force right here. And uh, we have this uh, normal force right here. All right, now let's uh, do a first, let's do the translational uh, force analysis. Uh, since uh, the ball is moving only down the ramp, it's not going up or down uh, vertically, so we will have this uh, vertical forces being zero, so we will have uh, sigma Fy equals zero, which makes n minus mg cosine theta equals zero, so that we can get this uh, normal force. And from this, we can find the maximum uh, static frictional force. And uh, this will just be left here. We can take a look to see if at sometimes if this ball is going to be slippery or not. Okay, let's uh, use the uh, Let's find the x component of these forces. So from the relation on the x component, we know that uh, uh, this uh, mg cosine theta minus fs equal to uh, ma. So this is the translational acceleration. Now let's uh, put down this uh, uh, torque and uh, find the rotational acceleration. So we have the torque as a tau, and there's only, as we said, we pick this as the rotational axis, so both gravitational force and a normal force won't create a torque, but this uh, uh, frictional force is going to create a torque in the clockwise direction. So we have tau equal to fs multiply r equal to i alpha. Alpha is the uh, angular uh, acceleration. Another very important relation in rotational motion is the connection between angular and the, the uh, linear uh, acceleration. So here we have uh, alpha and a, and 
going through uh, this relation. Okay, these are all the things we have, and uh, we can actually first try to solve. Uh, we try to put this thing into here and, and try to get a, a better form of this uh, frictional force uh, right here. So uh, we plug in this thing into into this and divide this r over and uh, so we get the frictional force equal to i alpha which is i a divided by r and uh, divide the r over so we get a frictional force equal to i l i multiply a divided by r square then we can actually plug this thing into this equation and uh, i try to get this uh, acceleration which uh, let's take a look here. So I copied this equation uh, right down here and I plug in this uh, uh, frictional force. So I get a mg sine theta minus i a divided by r square and we that equal to m a. So now we see we have this a and a here and I can move this term to my right side and uh, then group them and uh, try to find out this acceleration. Therefore, uh, by doing that, uh, we can find this acceleration equal to this mg divided by, by doing this, move it over, mg divided by m plus i divided by r squared. And uh, we then can divide the, the mass, um, the denominator and denominator so we are left with so g sine theta divided by 1 uh, plus i divided by m r squared. So if it's an arbitrary rolling uh, object and we don't know the i, but now we know that uh, for a solid ball, the i is this. So we can actually uh, plug in this thing and, uh, and finally we can uh, get this uh, acceleration for a solid ball. This is only uh, for a solid ball because we have to apply this into this eye here and then that gives you this result. For other uh, object and you can find the actual eye and, uh, and figure out uh, what is the acceleration would be. All right, we see that uh, we actually get this uh, translational acceleration and uh, get this uh, rotational acceleration and use the relation to connect them and then we find the acceleration for the uh, translation of motion and then use the same relation by plugging this a here we can actually get this uh, uh, rotational acceleration uh, with this uh, translation acceleration or rotational acceleration figure out we can actually figure out what is the frictional force uh, needed to be uh, in order to have this thing rolling down and this is a static friction, and so it can have any value up to this maximum value. Therefore, when it's uh, in certain cases, it may slip. And this will give us a way to check whether this object is going to slip or not. All right, this would be our result for the solid ball. Thank you for watching.